Welcome back. We're here in Indianapolis at NBA All-Star Weekend, and we've got a very special guest joining us, John Stanky, who is the CEO of AT&T. John, thanks so much for taking the time out Absolutely. here. Absolutely. It's great to be here with you. we got to talk about how sports has really been a fixture in AT&T's growth strategy and the, the customer acquisition strategy over the years here. AT&T Stadium in Dallas, you've got the 5G Innovation Partnership with the NBA's Los Angeles Clippers, and then you've got over 20 years with the NCAA as a partnership there. When you think out to how critical sports is to this broader strategy for AT&T, why, why invest so much into that? And what is the, the return on that investment look like for you guys? Well, you know, it, first of all, it's something people are passionate about. So it's always good to be associated with something that people have passion for. And generally speaking, when you go to a game, you're in a good mood, you're receptive to hearing things. Sports is something that's part of the culture in the United States, so it's easy to activate. You know, you're seeing some of the things we're doing here where you can use our technology to enhance the fan experience. That's a natural place to go, and as a result of that, it's just good to get the brand in front of people and do that activation. And then, you know, there's some pretty big iconic figures that play in these sports uh, events that yeah. you imagine you attaching yourself to it could be really good for your brand. Absolutely. You've got two NBA players in, in Shy and then as well uh, Paul George who have partnered with AT&T. So amazing to see that. You know, one of the huge things that you mentioned just a moment ago, technology and the proliferation of technology being embedded within sports. and. I think about some of the conversations that have been taking place around AI and how that's made its way to the NBA arena as well. How does that show up in your business from the way that you, the C-suite, are talking about that? Is, is AI just going to supercharge the next smartphone life cycle, for instance? Well, I, you know, f f there's AI in sports and then there's AI broadly. And AI broadly, I mean, I personally believe this is as seminal as the founding of the internet for commercial purposes. I mean, if I think back in the 99, 2000 time frame, we said, what's the internet going to do to business and what's the internet going to do to how you reach customers? I don't think we had any imagination of what was actually going to transpire. I think AI is going to be another really significant seminal moment. In, in our business, we have a lot of data in running our company. We have a lot of network information. We have a lot of information about our customers. If you can take generative AI and manage it with proprietary data sets, you can do some very powerful things. How we're going to engineer and design our network to adjust to traffic flows. What do we do to fine tune our customer service profiles to really match the particular need of a customer based on what we know on the behavioral patterns of what they're doing. These are all things that we're doing today and starting to engineer into the business. And then when you think about what we do broadly in society, when we're sitting in a arena, you start to imagine bringing in enhanced experiences, watching a basketball game. That's all payloads of data that have to be moved around that arena. And then if wireless is ultimately that user interface for that experience, it's going to be good for our business overall. What type of investment do you foresee AT&T really kind of leaning into this, this generative AI move that we've seen? Well, we've made significant investments right now. We're key partner with Microsoft or one of their lead industry partners right at this time. It's a joint investment portfolio where we put in our time, our energy, our resources, our knowledge of business process. They've been furnishing compute for us to do that, to build the applications that they'll ultimately sell back into industry. But we're at the tens of millions of dollars a year right now, scale just within our business. The, the growth narrative, it's been challenged by some analysts out there who downgraded the stock in 2023, and they were looking at some of the wireless and broadband segment concerns. But at the same time, I mean, you reported Q4 earnings results, you beat on revenue, slight miss on earnings, what do you say to those out there who are, who are doubting this turnaround story up against some tough comps of the past, too, for AT&T? Look, I, I couldn't have been more pleased with the way 2023 went in total. We laid out for the financial community what we intended to do, and we not only did that, we beat it. Most importantly, on cash, where we came in much stronger than, than what we had stated at the beginning of the year. And I think that's the ultimate sign of health in our company and in our industry. So I feel really good about how the business is operating. One of the reasons we were able to do that is the industry's healthy. And so I think there was some fear last year that people thought that the wireless industry was going to eat its young and that it wasn't healthy in how it was operating. And I would say quite the opposite. There's been record investment, new technology coming out, customers are using the product more, and those that invest in the technology are able to recover the cost of that investment 
by getting value and pricing right. And I think that's been happening not only at AT&T, but with our competitors as well. What is your read on the economy right now? I mean, there's so many forecasts that come out around this time of year from CEOs who are looking through and getting their read on the consumer. What is the consumer telling you about the shape that the economy is in? The, the economy is resilient. I think it's been more resilient than many of us would have given it credit for maybe a year and a half ago. And I expect carrying through 24, we're going to see more of that. We're going to continue to see consumers spending. Um, we don't see any dynamics in our customer base that suggests credit is a problem. Uh, we still have people paying their bills the way they've normally paid their bills. We see growth in our core products and services and people willing to pay up for more value. That's all good things. And, and I think, frankly, the dynamics in the country moving into a presidential election cycle Policy is probably going to line up to make sure the economy stays on pretty even footing as a result of that as well. What, what type of election cycle are you anticipating? How does that change the fabric of how you do business right now in the broader telecom industry? I think the one I'm anticipating is I have no idea, and therefore you have to anticipate every possible outcome and everything and just accept that it may take some twists and turns that are a traditional or different than what you might typically see and be ready to adjust to them. You have a Fed that could be cutting rates going into that election cycle and, and for consumers out there that, as you were talking about, the delinquency rates are at least alluding to it in, in some fashion, you know, for the consumer that's saying, I'm waiting for interest rate cuts because that's going to make me feel better. I mean, is that necessarily going to save them from the delinquency that they might already be in, or is it going to be such a sentiment turn for the consumer that it really elicits some type of different performance in the economy that we've seen to this point? I, I don't see a change because I think we're probably at peak rate right now, and I think things are pretty stable and healthy right now. I think based on last year's, last week's news, I don't see the Fed being disposed to a rate movement right this minute. It doesn't hurt my company. We're paying down debt. We're not out in the markets refinancing debt. We did a good job of structuring the balance sheet before rates went up and have very long-term structure around that and low interest rates. So frankly, for our business, I think we're fine. When the Fed starts to move, they're going to move. I don't know that it's going to have a dramatic change in sentiment in 2024 right now based on how things are structured. I want to end on a fun one because you guys have also really changed the fan experience for those who can't make it physically to some sporting events and games and matches with, with Holovision as well and some of the partnerships there. What is the next iteration of technology that is really just going to reinvent the fan experience from your perspective? Well, I, I think you're seeing it now. Vision Pro and what Apple is doing is another step in the augmented and virtual reality construct. Is that a hedge against like high ticket prices for consumers? No, I think it's both, right? I think there's going to be places where you want to go have that live experience and share it, but you can have a, even a richer experience at home that can have elements that will become more social and more interactive. And whether it's adding gaming and wagering into the experience while you're at home, if it's the social dynamic that occurs, when you're in the arena, there will be new uh, experiences that start to pop up as a result of that, that you know was talked about here at the session today. And these high performance networks that we're building are going to allow for that to happen. And it's augmented video that complements the play on the, on the court. These are all really exciting things that we're gonna see happen and they all drive more usage and more engagement with the networks that we build, and that should be a good thing for our business over the long haul. John, thanks so much for taking some time sitting down with us. We know you've got a packed schedule of events this weekend. It's good to be here, and I'm glad that we could share a few minutes together. Absolutely. Appreciate it.